So hey y'all, it's time to have a little bit of tea and a chat. This is a world. This is a world premiere. This is a world. Um, welcome to another food for thought. This is gonna be. It's not really a rant, and it's not really a mukbang. It's just I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna drink this tea. I'm drinking this puka. This is the licorice, this is the peppermint and licorice. Um, I don't know if you guys, I did some videos a while ago where I was um, I was doing that master cleanse and all I was doing for like, you know, variety was drinking all kinds of teas and so this is one of the teas that I bought back then. I have a table full of them, I don't know if you can see. Anyway, but um, today I thought I would sit down uh, and just chat with you all about some things, you know, off the cuff a little bit because sometimes it's not about being on topic, but just seeing what happens. So that's what's gonna happen today. Um, so I made a video where I was talking about, first of all, I wanna talk about Foot Soldier. I wanna get that a little bit out of the way because the title of the video was Foot Soldier Stalking, obviously a click baity title. The reason for that title was Foot Soldier sent me an email last week trying to kind of like um, convince me to continue a conversation that we were having about race. It wasn't really a conversation about race though, and that's what's, um, I think, a little bit confusing. It wasn't a conversation about race. It was a conversation about credibility. It was a conversation about presenting evidence that is credible. And if you're going to speak on a topic that you don't know a lot about, the least that one can do is try to find credible sources and balanced sources, not, you know, Infowars. If you're using Infowars, if you're using Sargon of Akkad, if you're, you know, if you're, um, if you're using, you know, Larry Elders, and that's what you're considering as, you know, a balanced, point of view, then it is not very likely that you are understanding topics in a full sense, in a, full, in a, in a way that uh, will allow for you to have, you know, an open discussion about them. You're going to be, you know, that's a one, you're going to be, you're going to be arguing for a side as opposed to looking at the full thing. And I don't have an interest in that. That just, to me, is, is boring, right? You know, if I wanted to, if I was down for that, I'd play sports. I play football <laughs> and I don't and I don't and so um, no I didn't you know sure yeah I was you know I was insinuating that that foot soldier was stalking me and maybe foot soldier was stalking me a little bit because once I made it clear that I didn't want to have that conversation I would hope that the emails would have stopped but they didn't stop and he even at one point said, you know, I'm gonna stop sending you emails on this topic and I was like, thank you so much. But then he sent me more emails and so it was just weird. And so it went on for about a week, even though after about the third email, I, was, I made it clear that I didn't wanna talk about it anymore. So anyway, I think that we're good now. I think that Foot Soldier knows that I do not wanna have a conversation with him about race or Black Lives Matter just because he doesn't know enough about it and it's just gonna annoy me and, and make me mad when he makes statements that are just, you know, you know, stupid. I'm sorry, I hate to be that way, but you know, if you're gonna say things that are just stupid like the Black Lives, talk about the Black Lives Matter list of demands, which is what a personal Facebook post you know, recommending with people who wanted to support, you know, Black Lives Matter. Anyway, it was a silly, it was a silly. So hopefully we're gonna put that to rest. I don't know, maybe Foot Soldier will wanna talk about it on his channel, that's fine. And then you can all hear about it over there. But as far as being over here, it is a done deal. So thank you, enough about that. So I made a recent video about, I was talking about Dave Cullen, I was talking a little bit about the skeptics movement. Now I don't want to, because I've made this mistake in the past, and now I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning as I go, to, um, to look at Dave Cullen and see him as an example of someone from the skeptics movement. I don't think it's fair. My video about Dave Cullen was about Dave Cullen, and I did make some, you know, 
uh, I made some comments about the skeptics movement because those were things that are sort of like out there and agreed upon the skeptics movement was going in one direction and then the skeptics started talking about at some point a few years ago the skeptics started talking about social justice that just happened not that all skeptics necessarily even agree on t in terms of social justice there seem to be some folks who are you know part of the atheist movement or the atheist plus movement atheism plus movement who are for social justice so I don't want to ever put people in a you know one group or talk about them and as monoliths I don't want to do that stuff you know and I, I don't even like using those terms because those don't mean stuff to it they don't they don't they don't mean anything to a lot of people they don't mean anything and that's something else that I want to talk about. I was actually talking to my husband and the, the, um, the, the idea of intersectionality came up and he said something that really surprised me because this is my husband, y'all. So you would think that he would know, don't, don't be fooled. You know, don't be fooled. Don't think just by being married to me or me being married to him that it means that either of us are any particular type of person, right? So he thought that intersectionality um, was, first of all, he thought it was intersectionality, like somehow being inside of the sections of, he thought it was something else. He thought that but he didn't understand what the word, he didn't understand the word, right? So he thought it was intersectionality. So he thought it was some bizarre form of sectionality. And then he didn't know what sectionality was. So it was really confusing for him. So that was funny. Um, but he, he thought it had something to do with um, sort of like coalition building. He thought it had everything to do with um, finding common cause. And I think a lot of people think intersectionality is about finding common cause. Cause. So I told him all about, you know, uh, I, I told him about Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, and I told him about, you know, the, the the court case where the you know the woman was trying to you know claim that there was discrimination because there was a business that had lots of women, but they were all white women, and they had lots of um, black people, but they were all men. And as a black woman, there was no place for her in that company, um, which you know is what it is, but it just makes it clear what the what the term is about. Um, we both agreed that, you know, terms can be very alienating and that we shouldn't use terms. <laughs> we shouldn't try to use those terms. Um, we cer certainly shouldn't just drop a term like intersectionality into ca casual conversation, right? And if you're using a term like intersectionality and then you have to define it, you might start off better by just not just go ahead and use the term because you're not saving time using intersectionality in that context. You actually are taking up more time using intersectionality and you're maybe making people feel a little stupid. I don't know. So I don't think that we should be throwing around terms at all in our casual conversations that we have about the world, right? Or, or as we're trying to, um, you know, make connections with people out in the world because the terms just alienate people. It, they just alienate people. But it happens all the time. And it doesn't simply happen, you know, on the left. It happens on the right as well. I've heard some terms recently that have just made me, just made my head swirl, right? And there's all the like little things like, um, like lib, like, I don't know, libbed hearts and, and, you know, I, I just don't even talk about it. Like there are just so many terms that get used on the, you know, in certain communities on the right. And that's another thing too, is that I wanna, and I'm gonna spend most of the, of the, not most of this, of this video talking about this, but another thing that I found has gotten really annoying is that you're there or you're there. Most people are not there or there, and they're not in the middle either, because the middle is a gross place to be, because that's like you don't know. People have opinions on certain topics that may be considered, you know, progressive, you know, uh, progressive ideas, right? People may um, value some progressive ideas, and then there might be other progressive ideas that really um, they find offensive. And I'm going to give you an example of a progressive idea or something that's considered a progressive idea that actually is not a progressive idea at all. It's not a progressive idea. In fact, I think it's a conservative idea in that it maintains a kind of um, lack of agency in certain communities. And let me explain it. And this is based on a true story. So a friend of mine calls me to tell me that they were um, working with a partner 
they were working with a partner in a particular setting where they were doing, you know, some arts-based work. And one of the participants in this art workshop, arts workshop, did a monologue where they used the word nigger over and over again. They used the word nigger over and over and over again, right? I believe it was a person of color, although it's not clear whether they were African American or not. It wasn't made clear whether they were African American or not, but that did not seem to be the point of the story. But this person used the word nigger over and over and over again. And they tried to, the person who was using the word was trying to explain that that's how you say, you know, that your homies, right? The people that you're close to are your niggas, right? They're your nigg my niggas, right? And so, um, the person who was telling me the story explained that that was not like they didn't they didn't feel comfortable using those words they didn't feel comfortable with those terms and the conversation seems it seems like the conversation went on and eventually the friend said yeah but you won't find me using that word and then they said the word apparently in that situation come to find out later that the person that they were working with um, who was a person of color reported them for using the word and said, you know, I don't want to work with that person. And it was, and like the, 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 the organization agreed that that person wasn't going to work with them. And, and it, then it turned out that the person was penalized for it. And I don't want to get into the, the specifics because I don't want, like if somebody casually hears this story, I don't want them to be, be able to put all the pieces together. But the person was penalized for it. So here you have a person, and now I'm going to say that the person who was telling the story happened to be a, a person who would be identified as female and a person who would be identified as white. And apparently the person that they were working with is a person who um, I believe also would be identified as female, but would be identified as, you know, black or African American. The person who was black or African American was the person who had the problems with the word nigger being used at all in any context. Now I understand that. I understand you have a problem with the word nigger being used. But you say to the person, you know what, I'm not comfortable with that word. End of story. And then the person being, can say, okay, all right, this person, this individual has a problem with that word. I'm not going to use that word with this person. However, the assumption was that everyone should know that a white person should never use the word nigger in the context of, you know, when they're in the presence of a black person or ever, right? Ever, right? But we're guessing that it's when they're in the presence of a black person, right? Because there was, there's, it's, there's a likelihood that that person is going to be able to use it around other people who are identified as white and be fine and be fine. But in this case, um, not only did that person, you know, not speak to them directly and say, hey, I have a problem with the use of that word and here's why. They never said a thing, simply went behind the person's back. I'm going to say went behind the person's back, reported them. The person, however, my friend who was telling the story was mortified in all of this and actually felt like they were wrong, that they were in the wrong. I'm not sure I agree. So then that in that workplace, the person who used the word in a context where it, per where it made perfect sense to use the word, they were, you know, it was an art space. They were, you know, doing a, a, a monologue and they used the word because the word had been used in the monologue. Um, that person gets, gets penalized. I don't want to, I don't want to say because it was the, the specifics of it are, you know, I don't want to get too much into the specifics of it, but the person was penalized. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, whoa, well that's kind of a discrimination because they were in a situation where someone who possibly could be identified as a person of color, I'm not sure, um, is using a word, was using the word nigger over and over again. And suddenly when this person who could be identified as white uses the word, they're being penalized. Now to me, it's either that word can't be used in that context at all or the word can be used by anyone in that context, right? Now I can understand if, my, if, if someone turns to someone else and says, you're a nigger or you're a, you know, bitch or you're a cunt or whatever. If someone turns to someone and uses that language against them, that is one thing. But to use the word, to say that using the word is off limits, when sometimes we need the word to make a point, we need to use, the, we need to use words to make points, right? And it's not vulgar, the word itself is not vulgar, it's the context in which the word is being used that makes it vulgar, right? Um, and so, 
I can understand how there are people who are outraged by the idea that someone through the use of a word can be penalized in any way, in any way. Um, especially when they're not using the word to be harmful, right? And even if someone is using the word to be harmful, I mean, yes, I could say, say that, okay, you're just being, you're being hostile in the workplace, so you're, and so, so it shouldn't matter whether it was, it shouldn't matter if you're saying something nice or unnice. If a person is being hostile in a workspace, then it shouldn't matter what they say. They're being hostile in the, worst, in the workplace. You can say, oh, you look really, really nice today and be really, really hostile and be creating a, like an uncomfortable environment. <laughs> for um for your for your fellow workers and then eventually we have a conversation and say hey you're making people feel uncomfortable and here is why and the person can say turn around and say well all i said was you look really really nice today but everybody else can be the witnesses and say no when you say it you're being very very hostile and you're being animated in a very particular way and you're directing it in a way that makes people feel uncomfortable what do you want to do about it we can have a conversation right and but the most important thing is that it becomes about the conversation that follows because if there's no conversation that follows then nobody knows what they did and the you should know better argument is bullshit right the you should know better argument is bullshit. No one should know better when it comes to what is appropriate to say to another person. We don't know because everybody is different, right? So that's how I felt about that, right? And so I can understand what, how people get you know, really, really aggravated, get really, really upset when it comes to certain ways of policing language, but it is not something that only happens on the left. It happens all over, right? If I talk about slavery, somebody's gonna be upset because, I'm, because I talked about slavery and it made them un uncomfortable, and they're gonna say that I'm, I'm being divisive in my language, right? And being di divisive in my language is basically saying that I need to stop. That's basically censorship, right? That's basically censorship. I am certain that that is someone who would not give a space for that kind of language to be used, right? Wouldn't give a space for that kind of, of language to be used. So I understand that censorship happens all over. Milo Yiannopoulos is the perfect example. Milo Yiannopoulos, everybody was really up in arms about the fact that there was those protests, those violent protests at Berkeley, right, where they destroy property, whatever, it's property, it's window, you fix a window, it happens all the time. A storm can, fix, can break a window, an accident can break a window, so it happens. Fires can happen by accident, right? It's California, they get fires all the time, right? But that's neither here nor there. But Milo Yiannopoulos being, you know, being silenced, right, um, by the folks at Berkeley and not being able to give his speech, that is censorship. But Milo Yiannopoulos losing his job because he says something about the age of consent? Silence, silence, crickets, crickets, crickets. So it's not just on the left that that happens. It happens all over, right? It happens all over. And you can say, oh, but hands down, it is wrong to talk about age of consent. It's hands down, it is wrong to talk about... No. Who gets to decide? If it's about freedom of speech, it's about freedom of speech. Milo Yiannopoulos should be able to say anything in any space, right? But we understand that eh, there are some spaces where it's not appropriate for things to be said, right? Um, you know, you don't want you know, a teacher who's teaching three-year-olds to just be able to say anything, right? It's so interesting because while I was watching the Dan Cullen videos, he mentioned uh, this situation where they were trying to teach sex ed in, you know, in like a preschool or something like that. And he thought, and, and, and Dan seemed to think that that was offensive. So it's like, okay, all right. So it's clearly we're ready to police language and we're ready to police thought in certain spaces. And it doesn't just happen on the left. It doesn't have, just happen to the right. It just needs to be, people need to use reason. People need to think, is this appro the appropriate space? Is it going to be beneficial for us to have this conversation in this space? If it's not going to be beneficial to have this conversation in this space, we can table the conversation and have it at a time when we, when we agree that this is a conversation that needs to be had. And nobody should be forced to listen either. Nobody should be forced to listen. 
So no one should feel like they can just go onto the street and get a permit and have police there to protect them. Uh, free speech and um, the, you know, the fact that the government is not going to intervene when it comes to the things that people say, especially when it comes to protesting the government itself doesn't mean that the government should give you the street. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you should be able to just give, have a march down Main Street anytime you want to to say whatever it is that you want to say. So that's, that's a whole other thing. So this idea of, you know, painting a picture that it is the left that is concerned with, you know, silencing speech and the right that is, is there to protect freedom of expression somehow, because it's not. Because it's not. Because if you were there to, you know, to, for, for freedom of expression, you wouldn't get so bent out of shape when somebody wants to talk, wants to redefine their gender. Who's it hurting? It's not hurting you. If somebody wants to redefine their gender, let them redefine their gender. Right? Let them, let them identify in any, let people identify in any way that they want. If you can identify as a Nazi, I can identify as a woman if I want to. If I want to. And who are you to say that I'm not allowed to do that? Right? And yeah, maybe it is um, pushing the envelope to, you know, put someone in jail or fine them or fire them from their job for if they, if they make a mistake in that way. But I mean, if I didn't want to call you by your name, if I was a teacher and I didn't want to call you by your correct name, I could be penalized for that. So why wouldn't someone want to be, why shouldn't somebody be able to decide how that they want, how they want to be identified as a person? If I, if I misidentify your religion, it could get me in a lot of trouble, right? If, if I can decide what I want to, if what religion I want to be, and I decide what religion I want to be, if I can decide what I want to wear, I should be able to decide how people refer to me, right? Within reason, within reason. And that's the problem is all of these things should be within reason, not up to the point where they deprive someone else of their livelihood. Not up to the point where they're depriving someone else of their livelihood. That's all, that's how I feel about it. And I'm sure that there are gonna be people on all sides right now who don't agree with me, but I have to be real about this. I have to, you know, I just have to kind of let this go, let this out. Because what happened yesterday was real, I found it really offensive and it was the first time that I had ever encountered that. But it wasn't, it wasn't a white man that was being penalized for it. It was a woman, it was a woman who was being, uh, who was being penalized for that, right? It was someone who was a part of the left and somebody who is pretty damn progressive probably an SJW, right? It was a, probably an SJW who was being penalized by, by this, right? And um, the person who was responsible for, you know, reported, reporting them, I don't know that it really was a way to increase their own agency because I, think, I feel like the way for them to have agency would have been to turn to the person and say, hey, I'm not comfortable with that. Not to go to someone else and who knows um, heaven forbid who that other person that they went to, right? <laughs> to to have them be the parent in that situation and make the situation right, right? So I just wanna, so that's how I feel about that. All that said, as horrible as all that is, it's not the end of the world, right? It's not the end of the world. It's the bumps and bruises on the way to having a society where everyone can get along and everyone can feel comfortable, right? And people don't feel violated. Right. So it doesn't mean that, you know, if, you know, saying to someone, you look very nice today, shouldn't be treated the same as, hey, mama, show me that, shake that tail. Right. Those things should not be treated the same way. So we have to be reasonable about these things. But again, they're not the end of the world. Right. I feel like we spend so much time. Uh, painting these issues as if they are the, the, you know, what is putting society at risk, you know? So SJWs, those are the, those are the, SJ, being an SJW is the cancer to society. Being, you know, being a, a skeptic is, you know, destroying society. The skeptics community are destroying society. Gamergate is destroying society. 
really. I mean, I understand that, you know, when you're, if, it's, if someone's calling in bomb threats and like making someone's life that miserable, and I think we all agree that that's bad, right? Some people want to excuse that type of behavior, but we can agree that that's bad. There's right, there's no excusing that behavior. But, uh, but uh, shy of threatening someone's life, putting someone's life, um, at uh, putting, you know, threatening someone's life, right? And making someone, making it so that someone can't go home because they think that, you know, a bomb is gonna blow up or they think that they're going to be attacked or they think that somebody's gonna be gunning for them. Um, you know, th that is horrible. That, that kind of stuff, you know, terrorism. Yeah, terrorism is a big problem. Terrorism is literally destroying society. But, um, Shy of that, it's just disagreements. It's just people disagreeing, right? It's not really oppression, right? On either side, it's not really oppression. And you can't tell me that, oh, it's gonna make it so that people don't wanna go to school. If we get to the point where people don't wanna get go to school, the schools will shut it down because they wanna make money, their businesses, right? So, you know, that's neither here nor there. What is destroying, you know, what we have to worry about is global warming, right? We have to worry about climate change. And we have people out there who have the power who, who are, you know, preventing the implementation of solutions that could slow climate change, right? War, war is dis literally destroying society, right? And there are people out there who are warmongering, who are creating situations where there is, they're, they're you know, they're um, increasing the engagement of like military forces in country, right? That to me, those are things that are destroying society. And so if you are supporting someone who is against preventing you know, climate change or even denying climate change, if you're for someone who's like that, but you're against an SJW, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite, a race. Click, delete, fail. Fail, automatic fail, right? If you're against, you know, someone who is a skeptic, who is calling people libtards and all kinds of horrible names, right? If you're against that person, but you support the fashion industry, <laughs> right? But you support the fashion industry that is, you know, keeping people in the most horrendous conditions working so that we can keep fa uh, uh, fast fashion alive, right? If you are against, if you're, so if you're against, you know, someone for using the word libtard, but you are a fashion uh, plate and you want to go out and be always wearing the latest fashions, I'm not going to say anything, Sorsha Marava. I'm not going to say, and I'm not going to name names, but you know what I mean? Um, if you're a vegan, but you're like pro, but you're pro fast fashion, there is a disconnect that's happening. So I think this idea that things are like either you're on the left and you agree with what the left stands for or you're on the right and you agree with what the right stands for, I think that that's no. I think that we can't live that way in a modern society. In a modern society, we have to look at what are the things that we value, what are the things that we want to protect. I can assume that people want to protect the planet, right? I can assume that. And if that's the only thing that we can agree on, then we can start looking at the things that we either agree or disagree with and try to like weigh them against that desire to have a healthy planet. Right? If we really want to live our values because we can find common ground there. Right? So, then some of you are like, but Reggie, you talk, you talk about is race, right? You talk about race all the time, and that seems like the only thing that you're concerned with. Like, I talk about race because it's interesting to me, but I don't ever want to claim that racism is what's destroying the planet right now. I think that racism might prevent people from working together in ways that they can prevent some of the horrible things that are going on. I, yes, I think that that's true, but it's not the only thing. It's not the only thing. And I think if we focus a little bit more on the things that we do have in common, I think that we can, um, I think that we'll find ways to overcome things like racism, right? 
But if racism is causing you to feel okay about the exploitation that's happening in some parts of the world, then yes, racism, racism is a problem. Racism is something that needs to be dealt with right away if it's making it okay for people to, you know, raise grain in Africa to feed cattle over here that end up, you know, doing things to the climate, right? So, you know, I'm just trying to keep it simple, right? I'm just trying to like rant about these things and just let you know what I'm feeling. Heavy, heavy things on my mind. I want to come back and I will talk a little bit about DACA. That's a whole other conversation. I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be reaching out to some of you. I've already said that I'm going to be doing a video just talking to content creators about why they continue to create content. So that is something to look forward to. Uh, I may be reaching out. If you're a content creator and you're watching this, know that I may be reaching out to you to send me a little clip talking about why you do what you do or if you just want to make a video of your own and you don't want to wait for me to like you know produce something about that and edit something about that i would love to hear from you why do you produce why do you produce videos why do you create content for youtube especially if you're a small content creator who's likely not making any money on this at all so that's it for this video like it if you like it share comment subscribe this is reg signing off Love yourselves. Peace. And